Goodbye, Sony. It was a real pleasure. Yep, I'm doing it. Time to move on. Move on from Sony. And hello, Fujifilm. Yo, guys, JPR Tech here, and today is gonna be a pretty much a farewell video for Sony. I just want to talk to you guys about my recent move to a different camera system. I want to let you guys know why and how I am making this change. But I'm really hoping someone might benefit from my experience using Sony and now using Fujifilm. Hopefully someone might take something from this video. So first, a short gear background story. I got into photography. Uh, after purchasing my first DSLR camera, it was an APS-C Nikon, or like they say in Japan, Nikon D60. And yeah, that camera was just so limited. Even at the time, it was like a budget camera, but I knew this was like, oh, this pretty mediocre camera. The ISO was terrible. It had grain everywhere. Uh, the just the quality overall was just horrific. It, was, it wasn't it was a good experience at all. And the worst part about it, it, it didn't even shoot videos. So yeah, it was time to let that thing go. I went over to Pentax KX and I love that camera. That camera was awesome. It's built like a tank even though it's so cheap. It could actually do ten, uh, 720p video, but the 720p on the Pentax was amazing. It was great quality. And yeah, and I, I loved that camera dearly until its end, until it just started failing, and I knew it was time to let it go. So I took it to the camera store and yeah, we re returned it. And at that time, the salesman, the, the camera guy, they told me that actually Sony at that time with the SLTs were coming out a lot of marketing at that time here in Japan and he actually told me that Pentax uses the same sensor from Sony so after doing my research and talking to the guys at the camera store yeah I just realized that the, basically the Sony SLT cameras are the, pretty much the same as Pentax seeing that the SLT cameras were a nice hybrid camera they were cheaper than the Canon ones than the camo Camo. They were actually cheaper than the Canon Rebel cameras, so I jumped into the Sony bandwagon. And actually, I didn't look back. It was an amazing ride. I started off with the A57, which I loved. And I actually liked it better than the upgrade when I upgraded to the A77. The A77 was just too much of a megapixel for its, for its time. It should have stayed in the 16 megapixel realm. They tried to do that megapixel raise and it, it actually crippled the camera a little bit in the ISO department. But it was still a great body. It was an amazing camera. The uh, shooting speed, the ISO, everything was pretty great. I really love that A77. And then after the mirrorless phase started, I was ready to move into mirrorless and I jumped into the A6000. Unfortunately, it did start breaking down. Um, I don't know if it was condensation that actually got to the camera. Uh, it just started powering down by itself automatically. So I think it was a condensation problem. Maybe it got wet inside and fried something inside the camera. So by then I started looking for other A6000, but I bumped into an A7 Mark II. Very cheap, used, and it was like $600. So you can't pass that out, right? And the reason why it was so cheap, it was because the back screen was all scratched up. And I just replaced the screen. And then it became like a new A7 Mark II. That was it. I got into full frame. Now the A7 Mark II is a great stills camera, but it really fell short on the video side due to the line skipping that the sensor has. The video suffers from more air. It's not sharp, it was, it's horrible. It was so bad, it was like, I couldn't wait to change the camera because it was just horrific video. 
that's where I upgraded. Technically, this is an older camera than the A7 Mark II, but it definitely was an upgrade on the video side. The clean 1080p that you get from this camera is just amazing. And surprisingly, even though it's a downgrade in the stills world, the photography, it still takes great pictures. I love the image and the sensor on the Sony A7 series. Now come 2019 and I get bit by the 4K bug. All of a sudden, the clean 1080p from the A7S wasn't enough for me, so I wanted to upgrade, find 4K, you know, camera that is affordable, but still take great stills. I wanted to uh, upgrade the video side of my camera. And also, you know, there are other cons that really push me into uh, moving on from the A7S and actually quite a few. For example, the lack of stabilization on this body. You will need a stabilized lens. The kit lens is pretty much the cheapest and most affordable stabilized lens you could find on the Sony mirrorless, the E-mount system. Everything else is just crazy expensive, it's way out of my budget. So it was, it was gonna be impossible to have a stabilized system in the Sony side in my budget. Another con is the slow focusing system. This uses the old contrast, you know, focusing system and it's just too slow. Like the body was a bottleneck to the lenses. So I knew it was time to move on. The lack of 4K, all these things just pushed me to deciding that it was time to move on. Now something I didn't expect is Fujifilm. This is where we get to the past couple of years. All of a sudden YouTube is started recommending me Fujifilm videos. I don't know why, or well, maybe I watch a few videos, but then all of a sudden I'm like getting into the Fujifilm like, whoa, I'm really liking what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. I should check them out. I went to the camera stores and I play with the different Fujifilm bodies. You know, we got the XC3, the XC2, the X-H1, which I am shooting on right now. <clears throat> and, you know, I even play with the cheaper models, the X-T20, the X-T30s. And it was awesome. I love the nostalgic feeling you get from using a vintage and well-built camera. You know, my vintage stuff. I have a bunch of vintage lenses that I had mounted on my Sony camera. And since Fujifilm is also mirrorless, I could still keep using these lenses. That leads me to how. How did I make the move? So I've been selling uh, a lot of my Sony gear in order to get Fujifilm gear. And surprisingly, for the price, uh, I believe I paid right now, I've been like in a thousand, two hundred, something like that. I got, for that much money, I got a X-H1 with a battery grip, got the kit lens with some, which I'm sh shooting with right now, the 18 to 55 f2.8 to f4. Add to that the 23mm f2 lens. Finally, I also added to the shopping list this mount, uh, PK to FX mount adapter. So now I can mount all my Pentax lenses into the body. And if you all know, I actually have a declicked 50mm f1.4, which is basically an awesome cinema lens. <laughs> it actually checked all the correct boxes. You know, my shortcomings of the Sony that I have, uh, build quality, IBIS, the focusing, the old outdated specs, all of these were fixed with the X-H1. And so that's my starting kit that I started out Fujifilm with. Can't beat that, you know, for a little over $1,000, you got a great mirrorless camera, rugged, great build quality with updated specs, two lenses and an adapter that lets me mount all my vintage lenses that I have. You know, for over $1,000, it's a great steal. And pretty much that's how I've been moving. I've been selling a lot of my Sony gear and I still got a couple more lenses and this camera to go. And uh, yeah, 
once everything goes hopefully it should cover all my fujifilm gear so guys what do you think right now what you're watching actually i'm in my zoom studio this is how i usually do my zoom with the fujifilm camera yeah if you like this quality hit a thumbs up so i'm gonna be doing a few comparisons especially since both of the kit lens that i have are very similar you know the fujifilm's aps-c sensor paired with the 18 to 55 f 2.8 to 4 lens is very similar to the sony a7s with the 28 to 70. Uh, they got very similar bokeh and uh focusing distance is the zoom is very similar but the image quality is a little different so actually this kit lens is very respectable but the Fujifilm's kit lens is on another level. That thing is sharp and the colors is just amazing. Oh, the colors. Did I even forgot to mention the colors? Okay, so really quick before I go, I gotta tell you about the colors because that's actually a con on the Sony. If you look at my channel, you, could, you will find a lot of videos that I made talking about Sony color profiles, the Sony uh, creative styles and trying to get the best look and uh yeah that's the that's the problem with sony you have to work you gotta uh it, it takes effort and knowledge and experience to get the colors fine out of the camera whereas the fujifilm i have never experienced this in my life i've never had a camera that you just shoot and you post it just like that this video I'm gonna upload this to YouTube just like it is. I'm just gonna trim the parts that are, you know, all my mistakes and errors. Yeah, we're gonna cut all those cringy parts and I'm gonna try to keep the important stuff, stitch it up together, and I'm gonna upload to YouTube. That's it. No brightness correction, no shadows, no saturation, nothing. Straight out of the camera. Fujifilm is the only system that I have actually seen this experience and now i'm experiencing firsthand being able to just shoot stills and upload them to instagram shooting videos and just upload them to youtube and actually i'm shooting in the eterna film simulation right now it's great out of the box right sharp has great dynamic range and you have other film simulations like my second favorite is the classic chrome that's another cool thing about the fujifilm world uh, people share their they freely share their recipes and a re recipe is kind of like a picture profile we could say you know how Sony has picture profiles and you could customize them to get a certain style like I purchased the EOS HD and I used that with the a7s it actually worked it, it, it works great and it's just in Fujifilm, we got these people share their recipes all over the internet, in the blogs, in YouTube, and it's an awesome community. So I've been loving it. I'm enjoying the Fujifilm. Uh, it looks like it's here to stay. So like I said in the beginning of the video, it's time to move on, Sony. It was a good run. Hello, Fuji. <gasps>